right, Mike. We're on, Herschel said. Uh -huh. That's right. Okay. <laughs> hey, folks, welcome to the Let's Go Fishing show. And as you can see, I got my best friend, buddy, and right-hand man right here, Mike, with me tonight. Bill had to cancel out on us. He was coming down, Mike, but yeah. said he just wore himself out today. Hmm. So uh, uh, with that said, we'll say hello to Dad and Polly hello and Bill. Dad. And uh, I also want to say hello to Dave and Lynn. They're uh, down in, in uh, almost in the Harriman there, and uh, they're watching the show. Uh, say hello to them. Uh, anyway, uh, Mike, we got a little bit of Dale Hall of film that I've been trying to get uh, on the air for a couple of weeks now. Uh, uh, and Herschel finally my camera skipped a beat or something. He finally got that fixed, and he's got that for us tonight. And then we got some crappie fishing, Mike, on Watch Ball. Yeah, yeah. Went down a little bit there Saturday and caught a few. Yeah, we had 14, uh, two just barely over 10, and the other 12 was nice ones. Oh, yes, sir. I got, I mean, I got a big bowl of filet. Mm -hmm. Don't tell nobody. <laughs> yeah. You ain't uh, done eat them yet? No, shucks, no, no, I ain't eat them yet. I put them in the freezer bag and drop them in the freezer. Uh, they may come in handy here about June. Well, I guarantee you that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, Mike, I want you to listen to this. Rick Mayberry called me yeah. and said that he was on uh, uh, Caney Creek yesterday, I believe it was. And this older gentleman, and I forgot what he, Rick told me. Rick, if you're watching, call in over here and tell me what that guy's name was. Had a three, Rick said, I asked him how he, how he was doing, you know, if he'd done any good. And he said, well, no, I hadn't really done all that good, but I do have a big crappie here. And Rick said he pulled that thing up out of the live well there, and he said, I about dropped, passed out. Mm -hmm. He said that thing is 19 inches long yeah. and weighed three pounds and nine ounces. And as a nice one too, I mean a dandy. So, uh, but I can't remember the gentleman's name that Rick said called it. But uh, uh, I'm sure proud that uh, he got that thing in. Rick got to weigh it. That's that's a pretty good sized crappie, Mike. That's a good one. That's a good one. And uh, while we're talking about the crappie, we'll just go ahead. Uh, I'm getting a lot of reports, and, and I'm going to, you know, Mike and I are going to be out there in 23 to 30, 32 foot of water mm -hmm. catching them. Yeah. And there's a lot of people catching them in there, folks, in three foot of water. Well, we've seen them guys catch a couple of that, that they were small. Yeah. Ones, you know? Yeah. So they float about three foot of line under it or something. Yeah. Like a little jig. A uh, jig and a, and a grub uh, uh, with a floater, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they're, man, anywhere there's a culvert mm -hmm. uh, on the lake right now, Mike, or a wide place to pull off, there's somebody on the bank. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they had them holes covered mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, there in the, in the, in the uh, Emory today, yeah, that big Emory. Everybody's going after them. They're, they're down there. I mean, uh, uh, some of them guys, I think they was uh, late going to work. Cause I was down through there at eight o'clock this morning, and and uh, uh, in the Woods Chapel area, and, and I believe Mike, they was kind of late getting to work, cause there's two or three of them had them uh, logos on their vehicles. You know, I'm not gonna say what they said, but mm -hmm. uh, don't want to get nobody in trouble. But they was out there on the bank of fishing, and I don't blame them. I would too. Uh, but uh, well, it's about wound up for me. It's wound up here, and I'm. Got rid of my minors and put up my crappie stuff. So. You promised? Yeah. Huh? The yeah. mic? Hey, folks. Yeah. Herschel, you got any pencil and paper? Take an affidavit? Yeah. All right. Yes, sir. Okay. Time, time to get the crankbaits out and spinner baits and jigs and start bass fishing a little bit. Buddy, I'm sure proud to hear you say that, Mike. I'll yeah. tell you that right now. Yes, sir. I, I'm ready. I've been ready for the last two months. I got to work tomorrow. <laughs> uh, yeah, Mike, them frogs has been hollering for two months. Mm. And I've been down there crappie fishing when I should have been bass fishing. Well, you know. So, you 
know, you're going to have to. I'm glad to hear you finally put the mineral buckets up. Now yeah. we can go to getting on the bass fishing. Yeah, you can't fuss too much. You've got some in the freezers. No, I can't fuss any, but man, I like to catch them old largemouth bass. Yeah, right? Them smallmouth bass. I like bass. to eat them crappie myself. I do too. I like to eat them too. We'll just have to figure out how to catch them with a knife. Now, I'm going to tell you another thing too, folks. I got, a fella told me this week, there's a guy been catching some walleye over blow mm -hmm. loud and down. Yeah. That's huh? something to catch there now. Yeah, mm -hmm. and a few sauger, but he's catching more walleye than he is sauger. Yeah. And he says that's going to last for another few weeks mm. uh, till the water warms up. They coming up there to spawn, and, and uh, uh, so, uh, you know, but that, that made me think of something else, Mike. It's $34 for your fishing license. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. You know, I was all over them boys getting the raise over here the other, uh, you know, like last oh, yeah. year. But dad gum, I didn't know they was going to break the bank. Well, I heard they was going to go up again next year to $40. Go up again next year to $40. I, I'm going to have to get them back over here. I'd like for them to tell us a little more of where that money's going. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, dad gum it. Uh, <laughs> For sure, I don't want to be dragging my trailer when I'm trying to put my boat in down there off these boat ramps in the wintertime. It, it costs a lot of money to raise them rockfish. Well, uh-oh, right there's one of them calling now. I hope it is. Let's see who this is. Is that for me, Herschel? Yeah. I bet it is. Hello, caller. Hey, Steve, this is Liz. Hey, Liz, good to hear from you. Well, um, I'm glad to, I'm glad that you were there for me to talk to. Uh, I just want you to know I went down to Tim's Tires. Yes, ma'am. And I got all new tires for my trailer for my Triton. Mm-hmm. I got four new tires, and they were awesome. I, I agree with you, Liz. I've got to get well, two for my trailer uh, as quick as I can round up enough money for Mike. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I just wanted you to know, I mean, the, the ladies in the office, they were they were great. Um, I talked to Tim. He had the tires I needed right there, right then. Um, so um, I was I was glad that I, I got hooked up with them. So well, I appreciate that. Well, Liz, I, I'm, I'm glad you did too, and I'm glad you were well pl a, a, a pleased customer because uh, – uh, those guys down there, they're so dang busy. I don't know how they know what, what day of the week it is, but they've got all types of tires and, and wheels down there, and I'm glad you're well satisfied. Yeah, well, I just want to tell you that, and I'll talk to you soon. All right, Liz, and I hear you've been picking up garbage, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. That was fun. All right. <laughs> I talked to yeah. Willie. I talked to Willie on my way over, and and uh, so I, I guarantee you that was all right. <laughs> <laughs> I had a big time. <laughs> uh, well, that's great. That's great. Leah's good all to hear right. from you. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. All right, see you, buddy. Bye. Bye. All right, folks. There you go. I sounds mean, like, honestly, sounds like that cleanups in full swing. There's cleanups in full swing. Uh, uh, I, I'm not going to ruin. Willie's supposed to call over here and tell me what they got done today, and and uh, sounded like they done pretty good. Uh, uh, it's like I told him, I don't know uh, the, the the big cleanups are going on. You folks heard uh, Dennis Ferguson over here last week, and uh, they got the big cleanup started today uh, in conjunction with uh, Clean Up America uh, or Clean Up USA, whatever they call it, and uh, uh, so uh, that's going on in Roan County down here and, and uh, they got people picking up trash everywhere, Mike, and then on the highways and and then and, and Saturday they're supposed to get some out of the lakes. Mm -hmm. uh, the East Tennessee Sportsman Association is supposed to work around Caney Creek down in that area uh, in Roan County and uh, clean up there on the side of the lake and, and in that uh, launch area down there. So uh, that's uh, that's a pretty good deal. And, uh, uh, so that, that sounds great. Hope that works out real good. We, we all know we can sure use it. Um, let's see, what else was it I was talking about there? Uh, oh, Liz and, and Tim's tires, folks. Heck, 
you know, you can't fool, you can't beat them. I mean, that's just the bottom line. And like she said, the ladies there in that office, uh, they're just like me and you. They just there to help you any way, shape, form, or fashion. And and uh, they get their tire. You know, you pick go out there and pick your tires out, what you want. Tell them what you need. They'll go get it for you and send it up to the to the mountain balance people, and they'll put them on for you. So uh, uh, that's the way it works. Uh, okay, Mike uh, Herschel, you ready to go to film? Okay, buddy, let her roll. My, some of mine and Bill's friends right here coming in here to get a fishing report from us. We're going to check them out and, and uh, get, get them on camera here. Okay, folks, there's Bill's buddies, my buddies. Got David Duvall, Steve Ford, and, and Jerry Mimic here. Look, there was some smallmouth, folks. I'm telling you, man, them's nice enough. So I'm going to zoom in, guys. I hope you're none of you are wanted for anything. <laughs> Exactly right, but you had a good dinner last night. Was oh, ready to fish had today. A, had a super family. dinner, and thanks to Steve yes, and, sir. Here, and, and Jerry, they furnished the dinner last night, That's man. Right. I'm telling you the truth. When I went to bed, I was still full. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so far this morning, we put 15 of these in the boat hey. and lost three more big fish. Hey, son, you can't beat that. That's, like I said, that's what we all come to Dale Hollow for. <laughs> all right, guys. We're going to put them back in. Put them back in, boys. Just watch this. Just watch this. Is. There they go, oh, man. Son, look at that. <laughs> yes, sir. Buddy, they're gone. Look at what is man alive. Them some yes, nice ones, guys. Hey, gone. Hey, fellas, appreciate you taking the time to visit with us. And, uh, well, let's go fishing. Let's straight. go fishing. That's <laughs> what we're going to do, guys. Just get after them. We've got a perfect day. Great I'm day. perfect day. Great. All right. Max said he was going to have to quit early, but uh, I told him if I was him, I'd fish as late as I could. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. Hey, gentlemen, appreciate it, man. Uh -huh. Drugs. All right, folks. Mike and I are down here on Watch Bar. On Saturday, got down here about noon time. We had a heck of a morning. Mike locked the keys up in the truck, and uh, there's our first big crappie, and boy, it's dandy. That's a nice one, Mike. All right, we're gonna get uh, get back at him here. Boy, he hit that thing good too. All right, we're gonna get at him. Yeah, he's not as big as that first one, Mike, but he's a good keeper. Good keeper, too. All right, folks. Remember the sponsors, and then we are fishing. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've done less go fishing. We are fishing. Yeah, that's right. We'll All stay right, after from here and see what we can do. Okay. All right. Looks like Steve's found another one there. That's a nice one, too. Good boy, Mike. That'll work. Yeah. we we'll stay after him. We might get a few four days over with. Yeah. I think he's a little bit small. Yeah, he is, Mike. You throw him back for seed. Nope. All right. Stay after him here. Mike. All right. Yeah. Yeah. What, are you catching him? Where you going? Well, shoot, that sounds good. That sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Yeah, holler right back at me. All right, buddy. That's a good one, Mike. Had a phone call there. Feller on the north catching fish, so, uh, but well, that's a good one. That's four or five we got in the box, folks, so we're after them down here. Getting these crappie. All righty. All right, Mike, got another good crappie right there. Take that. That a boy, Mike. Yeah. Well, we may have enough to freeze a pan. Yeah, we may do it. All right, stay after Give me one of them crappie down there. Yeah, sure did, Mike. That's a nice one, too. Uh oh, yeah. I got one on. Oh, you got one on. Hey, yeah. Now, Mike, that ain't no good. Herschel, he's trying to trick me up here now. <laughs> I want you to know it. Yeah, here you got it. All right, yeah, I got you. Wind's blowing us in on top of our fish. Oh, yeah, man, that's a, that's a good. That's a good one there, Mike. Here, 
Take your hook out. Got him. All right. Yeah, that's the way we're supposed to do them right there. Double up on them. Good deal. Oh, yeah. They're getting, getting better all the time in there, Mike. All right. Yeah. I'll have to let him get him another minute or so, I'll tell you what. we get back in. Yeah. All right. Mike's got something Don't on now. Crappie or a cat. Oh yeah, Mike. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> I hope they all, you don't know what they are like that right there. <laughs> yes, sir. That boy. Those remember the sponsors. The Let's go fishing show. Man, I tell you what, Mike, you're doing good. Just keep it up. All right. Oh, oh Mike's got another crappie. Another little crappie. Another little crappie there. A little above a keeper. Got to be a bigger one down there, Mike. Yeah. Oh, I can't get that thing to cut off for me, Mike. Let's start filming upside down. Mike, I got a Herschel. Yeah, yeah. He's got a Herschel on. We have to discount that one. Yeah. Catch him next time. He's got one on. I don't know what it is, but oh, I look like a, another one of them Herschels. <laughs> yeah. Too bad Herschel ain't here with you to catch them. Sure are healthy rascals. Plenty of them, that's for sure. Yeah, that's right. a butter ball. That's a butter ball, too. We'll get back at them, try them a little more. That was a Herschel right there. I said, it don't look like no Herschel to me. Ah, that's one of them nice ones. One of them frying pan jobs. Yes, sir, bud. All right. We'll take that. Get yeah. back after them. Yeah. All right. Oh, Mike's got a, another good crappie there, Mike. <clears throat> Yes, sir. You need a minute or two, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you two. All right. Good deal, Mike. Let's get some more. Yeah. Steve's got something on here. I See? think it's a Herschel. Yeah. 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 Is, he got another Herschel. God damn that rascal. Okay. Uh, we know what to do with him. All right, folks, our old Mike got another big crappie. 30 foot. About 30 feet. That's We've caught a few in there shallower than that today, but their, their best fish is coming out here in that 30 feet of water. Sure is. All right, Mike, keep at it, son. All right, Steve's got him one on here of some kind. Let's see, oh, oh yeah, yeah that's another crappie. Fun. Come here, big boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, now. I'll let him get off. Oh, yeah. Let him get that in, because that's, that's frying pan size there. Yeah, boy, my. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah, right. Yeah, man. Oh, tell you what, them will eat good. Them will eat good, too. Yeah. Okay. I'll let uh, him get him another minute and get back after it. Yeah, get back. Oh, yeah, man. That a boy, Mike. <laughs> yeah, I'd say that feels like a crappie, bud. Yeah, he hit it twice though before you got him, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. You gonna try to save him in her? Yeah. Spit him up the line, well. Yeah. All right. Good deal, Mike. That's a nice one. All right, folks. Mike and I are fixing to head in. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know. We've got uh, nine, twelve, fifteen good crappie in there and we eat good mike yeah. sure will all right folks remember the sponsors and let's go fishing it's calming down now mike you should yeah. yeah. should have waited till the wind quit blowing yeah. okay bud yeah folks you can catch those fish out there about 30 feet a little 30 31 caught a couple 32 feet so 
Uh, and we caught a couple in there in about 20, 23 feet. So uh, we're doing all right, Mike. Let's go, we'll try to catch the replay. Okay, folks, <clears throat> I'm down here at Blue Springs. Me and Steve had 14 crappie yesterday. Caught most of them around 30 foot deep. He's going to North for Bill today. So I'm down here by myself. Of course, I, like I say, I'm still using the same rig. A couple of hooks, a couple of minners, and bell sinker on the bottom. I'm gonna get out here and uh, see what I can find. Hopefully I can catch another mess of them crappie there. I think Steve's gonna try to eat all them others. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I hope I can do pretty good today. It's gonna be a pretty nice day. A little bit windy, but that shouldn't matter too much. So hang with us and we'll see what we can do. Steve says, remember the sponsors. Let's go fishing. All right, we're back, folks. Uh, Mike, give us give give us some details on that little crappie trip you and I made and uh uh our last Saturday and how deep of water, what you know, I know you're fishing with minners, you know. I think the shallowest one we caught was about fifteen and the deepest one we got was what around thirty, thirty five maybe. Yeah, I I know uh, yeah. It seemed like they were just one crappie to a place and then you'd move 10 feet or a quarter of a mile down there and pull up on another place, you'd catch another crappie, and then you never could get another one out of that place. Uh, I don't know what it was, but we'd done a lot of moving around, but ended up with 14 good crappie. Yeah, so, uh, I agree with that, Mike. They wasn't, uh, they definitely wasn't bunched up. Uh, no. they, you know, you'd pull in there and get a, a, a nice one, and, uh, uh, you know, the next might get two we didn't do that many places but then the next one you'd catch wouldn't be seven inches long yes sir, yes, sir. or a bluegill yeah and, 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 and catfish, it's, it's, a little bit yeah catfish it's time to move yeah you have to go hunt another place so uh uh the baits uh is them chartreuse minnows yeah yeah chartreuse <laughs> yeah. yeah so mm -hmm. uh uh the sinker how heavy a sinker is you using i was using a half half pound yeah. I think I was using the three eighths. Yeah. Oh. I had that on before because of the current that I was trying to fish out there in the channel. I had a lot of current, so I was using a half most of the time. I'm fishing it. Mm -hmm. Not fishing much more than twenty. I use three eighths or something, you know. But uh, right. You don't have to go that heavy with the current. But the water's clarity was is improving too, and it seemed like just back in the holler just a little bit or or get back off the, the channel somewhat there to, uh, uh, you, you, it started clearing a lot better mm-hmm I, I agree uh, water still got a lot of color to it down there it, it does it does but it's it's improving yeah for this next rain coming in here this week <laughs> yeah yeah probably yeah. get another it'd be time to get the flipping stick out but then uh, well, I'm tickled to death that you got rid of the mineral buckets, Mike. Uh, hey, folks, uh, I, I, I want to say happy birthday to my granddaughters, Shanna and Samantha. I meant to do that last week. Their birthday was this past Tuesday. And, girls, I'm sorry I forgot. I didn't forget you. I just was overwhelmed with things to do, and I didn't read my notes close enough. But So happy birthday to both of you and, and many more. Yeah. So uh, that'd keep me out of trouble, Mike. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hopefully, right. maybe they'll forgive me for I did. Like I said, I didn't forget them. I just didn't announce it. But anyway, there, I took care of that. Um, had a high school bass tournament up north this weekend. Point nineteen, or no, is Anderson County Park. Anderson County, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I got a few pictures uh, of that event. Uh, uh, was sent to me, and. Uh, uh, my buddy Hines and, and his son Harrison was in the tournament and his partner had got sick the night before and didn't get to make it so Harrison had to fish by himself and and uh, uh, they were fogged in hmm. uh, yeah. uh, Harrison can you show us a couple of those pictures 
all right, that's just never how long it takes. Uh, but uh, the fishing was tough up there that day. Uh, I think probably about 10 pounds won it, and there was like three or four bass, uh, high school bass clubs participating in it. There you go. Yeah, there's Harrison. There they are sitting out there, and there's, there that's almost 10, 30, 11 o'clock before they get out of there, and then there they are coming back in, and uh, there's way in, and uh, there you go, 9.46. So uh, I think that was the winner of the tournament. So uh, pretty tough day for the high school kids, and and uh, uh, usually takes quite a bit of weight to win one of those things. Uh, and Norse has been doing pretty good, but I'll tell you what's going on up there. We got a lot of turnover water, Mike. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's as red as red right in, right back in the back of them, some of them pockets, especially the ones that's catching a lot of the evening sun. Uh, uh, you got a lot of turnover water and uh, the wind uh, and and up the lake uh, that's uh, above uh, point twenty four uh, towards uh, on up in the river there. Uh, that, you know, so what does that tell you? But the water temperature is only uh, 50 degrees, yeah. 50, 51 degrees. But, you know, and, and I won't tell you what we've experienced, folks, with that turnover water. That, that means that the water temperature is pretty much equal. If it's turned over in, in 10 foot of depth, the temperature is the same from 10 foot, from zero to 10 foot. It's crank and don't think. It's crank and don't think. That's exactly <laughs> right, Mike. Uh, so, uh, yeah. If I win up there today or tomorrow, I'd have to jerk out my crank, my crankbait for sure. That's right. Uh, a chartreuse crawdad, preferably. If you can find some of them, you can guarantee you catch some fish. Uh, but uh, seriously, the uh, well, lake is turning over up there kind of early. But heck, the frogs have been hollering for two months, Mike. Yes. I know they've looked through ice a couple of mornings, but now they've been a croaking. So uh, that's what I like to go by right there. Uh, but anyway, uh, a lot of that's going on. Uh, the the uh, like I said, fishing on Norse is hit or miss right now. Uh, depends on who you talk to, where they've been, and where they're fishing at. Um, so uh, the you know that kind of thing. Not that you can't catch them. Uh, but that's something you can look forward to is that turnover water. Now, Bill had a good trip up there this week. Uh, uh, yeah, I think he said he boated about 20 bass, and uh, uh, but they were in the Cove Creek area, and he he kind of told me he stayed in the clearest water they could find. So I'm sure there's muddy and turnover water out in Cove Creek mm. also, Mike. Uh, but it's good to hear Bill, you know, tell us about that. So... Uh, that's kind of what we got going on. Um, let's see, a couple of other things here. Uh, yeah, I didn't want to forget about the, the big cleanup uh, in Roan County. And Willie, you can call in anytime and give us a report on how y'all done. Uh, I will tell you about the East Tennessee Sportsman's Association. Had their meeting uh, last, uh, or this past Tuesday night uh, at the Roan Street Grill in Harriman. 7 o'clock, and I'll go over the little bit of what they discussed down there and uh, uh, quick as we get this phone call. Go ahead. Oh, didn't get it. Hey, go ahead, caller. Hey, Steve. Hello, Willie. Good to me. Yeah, I hear you. Hey, we had a good day today. Uh, Michael and uh, Eric Trail. And Liz and I, we picked up two pickup truck loads of garbage between Harriman, I mean, between Midtown and Harriman. Man, uh, Willie. We got about halfway. Boy, oh, that sounds great. That sounds real good. Uh, uh, two, two truck loads. Yep. Boy, I'll tell you what. Uh, that sounds really good, Willie. I don't know... Uh, uh, that's that's wonderful. Yeah, we had uh, Tristan Case. He was out there. He had to leave where he had some stuff to do. But uh, we had a good turnout. And 
We got quite a bit of trash picked up, and uh, Saturday they're going to have the boats out there in Candy Creek, and uh, they're going to have people out there helping us uh, clean up the air across from the Candy Creek ramp. And they're furnishing the bags, gloves, and the um, those little sticks that you pick up the garbage with. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we got a good picture of the East Tennessee Sportsman Let's Go Fishing banner with um, Dennis Ferguson, Liz, and myself. Right. So we had a good turnout. Man, that's a good meeting. We have 20 members to show up at the meeting Tuesday night. Had a good turnout there. And uh, I guess that's it. Shoot, that sounds good, Willie. Uh, you got your next meeting. Uh, you, you Did I hear you say you had a guest coming to speak at the next meeting? Uh I'm not sure. I'll have to get back with you, but I think we do. Okay. All right. I'm not, I'm, he hasn't committed yet, so. Right. Okay. So hopefully we can get, uh, maybe Bud can get those coon hunters to come. Yeah. Yeah, That's damn cool. Change from uh, the third Tuesday to the second Tuesday, because that's the same night they meet, and, uh, they said they would come to our meeting if we change it, so mm. we're looking forward to getting them there. Yeah, that sounds good, Willie. Sure does. Like to have some bird hunters and some deer hunters show up, turkey hunters too. Yeah, they had the, uh, what they call the old fox tournament yesterday down at uh, Tom Fuller Park. Thirteen pounds won it. Thirteen something, nine pounds. Eight pounds was second and third. Uh huh. It was a tough day. I think Miss Liz had one keeper. Uh, Bud Strader and them, they didn't have any keepers, so they had a couple good fish on. They said it was really tough out there. Yeah. Well, I, it doesn't surprise me. Uh, you know, uh, Willie, it, it, the water conditions on Watch Bar there really hadn't got great yet. Cause it this the muddy, cold, muddy water running down the river, I reckon. Right. You know. So, well, it's getting about right. So now, now we got all this rain here. I don't know what it's going to do to us. Yeah, I hear you. All right, Willie, we got another call. I appreciate you, man. All right, thank you, and you have a great night. You all and Mike. All right, okay. Willie, thank you, buddy. Okay, catch you later. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hello, caller. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's Bill Lamb Price. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, what, what's what's the word this week? Well, I, 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 I just want to uh, ask a question there. Uh, Willie called all them daggone trashy people down there. I was wondering how many of me, uh, uh, let go of life. Uh, that's a good question. I, I you know. Somebody's throwing that trash out, ain't they? Yeah, it's a shame. Be that much littering going on. Uh, 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 I thought I was going to tell you, uh, I've got a new product line that will be uh, maybe coming out with Aunt Jean and Uncle Jim down the edge more. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. As soon as I turn them on to it, but it, it, it's a new light. That will light up the whole bottom of the boat. That way you can see your feet. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that sounds good. I, you know, I've had a few rods stepped on up there of a night. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, well, I, you know, I'm not like you. I can only afford one <laughs> one rod at a time. <laughs> oh, Lord. And, and uh, you know, uh, right. I, I'm I'm on a limited. Uh, Right, I understand. Yeah. I got you. Uh, so, uh, uh, 
you know, I, doggone it, I, you know, I, it's, it's a terrible situation. Yeah, it really is. And, and you know, I'm not like Uncle, Uncle Jim there. Yeah. You know, when he can just come and go as he wants. Yeah. I hear you, man. So, so uh, but you can be on the lookout for them new lights. Okay. Uh, uh, and I'll try to turn it on to Aunt Jean and Uncle Jim down at Edgemore. Okay. All right, that that sounds good. I'll uh, I'll keep my eyes and ears open. The next time I get up there, I'll definitely be asking about. Them. Well, it's it's almost as good as those uh, waterproof minutes. Okay. Yeah. I guess you're pretty happy since this weather's warming up and the neighbors is getting ready to turn their sprinklers back on, ain't you? Uh, well, yes. It it definitely makes showering a little better. <laughs> okay. See you, bud. <laughs> All right. Uh, I was hoping he'd give us a good fishing report, Mike, from over around Milton Hill, but he, he didn't want to indulge that any in that information. I, I hear they're catching some fish on Milton Hill right now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Doing pretty good on some bass. Yeah. But uh, that's kind of I've heard that had that leaked out a little bit. Uh, Folks, do remember the sponsors of the show. Uh, I mean, you know, we can't do this thing without them. I just promise you that. Uh, uh, if you can tra do any kind of business with them at all, it would be greatly appreciated. And and they like if you can remember it, they like to hear you say, hey, thanks for putting on the Let's Go Fishing show. Uh, it just uh, makes it a lot easier uh you know, because they, they, they pay me and I pay the studio and it just rolls right on. And uh, uh, just makes it easier for me to uh, keep, keep the show going. And, and yeah. hopefully Mike's going to get better on this show. We're going to set up a fish tank and, and uh, uh, to demonstrate some of these baits we're, we're using and, and that kind of thing. And we'll see who this is. Yellow. Go ahead, caller. Hey, Steve. Yeah. It, yeah, this is Ronnie. Go ahead, this Ronnie. Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in other words, J Ronnie or Johnny, either one, it don't matter, does it? No. Oh, just, just just, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Ronnie. Oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, one of the things Willie forgot to say was that we talked about the meeting. Yeah. Uh, down there at Iron Hill, they uh -oh. did not pull that stake out. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Boy, I'm glad. You, you know what? I was just, I was going to just have my paper here where I made them notes. But you're exactly right, folks. What he's talking about is when they put those new marker buoys up going through Iron Hill cut through, there was one of those steel pipes being over. Yeah. yeah. It laid over. And they didn't. Hey, it's, right, it's right there at that big grid marker. Right there at the bid. Okay. Anyway, it's laid over, and there's already been one lower unit tore off on that thing yeah. already. I know it. So, uh, uh, I'm glad you called, Ronnie. I really am. I, I'm, I had my notes laying right here. I just hadn't got to mention them, but that's a biggie. Uh, yeah, it's a big problem. Since, since the water's low, and when it gets up, there goes another lower unit or uh, Yeah. Oh. Or hull, or somebody killed or injured. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, re remember that. Uh, is it on the upper end of the uh, the cut through, or on the lower end going out? It's right that middle one. The mid okay. Uh, I know which one you're talking about. Uh, if if you're traveling that way, folks, uh, be cautious because, uh, that, like I said, I know the guy that lost his lower unit down there. Just you know, not long ago, right before the, I guess right before, right before the water went down, yep. and, uh, and when it comes up, you know what it's going to be. Yes, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we <clears throat> Willie and 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 
uh, Bud and them's supposed to be making some contacts to try to get that thing pulled up out of there before the lake fills up. So, well, I had to get a rope on them and get them to do anything. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you may have to do that, Ronnie. You may have to do that. Whatever it takes to get it out of there before somebody gets hurt with it. I uh, know. Uh, that's a bad situation right there now. Yeah. You know how I am about that place. I've been I've been fussing about it for a year or so. I know you have, and, and I'm proud we got what we got done, but that definitely that is a safety hazard that needs to be addressed ASAP. That's real quick. Yes, because, sir. Uh, when that water comes back up, it's going to be a very hazardous thing. Yeah, and, uh, you know, uh, what what one boat wreck in there is going to be bad enough, but if you're meeting a boat there and then you hang that, run that, uh, uh, what is it, inch and a half, two-inch galvanized pipe that sign was on? Yeah. Yeah, and you run that through your boat and then flips you around and hit another boat, and then you, you know, you've got a double whammy then. That's right. Uh, but I'm proud you called over here and reminded me of that because I did write that down last thir or Tuesday night, and uh, I was going to mention it. It says, Hazard and Arm Hill Cut Through. Boy, I had it yes. wrote down. All right. Hey, man, good to hear from you. You too, Steve, and you and Mike take care. All right, All right. buddy, you don't have right. a good fishing report for Mike, do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's, uh, it's rough on Ross Watch Bar. Yeah. Let's put it that way. All right, man, that sounds good enough. That means he needs to go somewhere else, right? Well, I don't know about crappie now. I, I just fish for them, uh, them old bass. I know it, but he promised me he'd done put the crappie stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> well, from what I understand, they're not uh, hitting very many crappie anyway. Yeah, it's just the hit or miss, Ronnie, yeah. what we're here. Well, good to hear from you, buddy, and I'll see you in a few days. All right, you take care of yourself, Steve. Uh, all right, buddy. Thank you, bud. All right. Bye. Okay, folks, there you go. Uh, if you all can, if any of you listening is, can help us with this situation, we'd surely appreciate it because uh, that pipe is bent down and it's just top of the water and the water comes up, it's going to be a foot and a half and under the water or two feet and just right to get a lower unit or run through your boat or whatever. So, uh, if, like I said, if you know of anybody that can help with that situation, I'm sure Willie and them would carry it on with you or let them, let, you know, call and get, get somebody in on it. Well, that's how it got bent over a boat run over. over. That's <laughs> right. Exactly right. Hello, caller. Hey, it's me again. Okay. I was going to call CBA today, and I forgot all about it. I was about cleaned up, got me throat off. So I will remember it in the morning, and I will get to that lady, and see if I can't get that pulled up. Thank you, Willie. Appreciate I'll, it. I'll call her the first thing in the morning. All right, man. Thank you, Willie. All righty. Thank you. All right. See you, bud. All right. All right. That's good. Willie knows who to contact. That's all about the Ten East Tennessee Sportsman's Association right there, getting the contacts made and, and that kind of thing. Um, Mike, let's run through some of these tournaments, man. They're, I'm telling you, they're coming up here faster than you can shake your head. Uh, better get my glasses on right here. Um, the Blue Ridge Bunch, uh, Bass Masters over here, they got uh, March the 26th. They're going to be on Chickamauga at Dayton. Mm. You've got mm. the Fishers of Men. Uh, they're going to be on uh, uh, April the 16th. They'll be on Cherokee at the, at the dam. And uh, uh, that's the Fishers of Men. Cherokee, that's April the 16th. It'll be at the dam. Then you got the Heartland Anglers up here on Douglas. They'll be... Uh, uh, March the 26th, and they'll be uh, at the Dandridge Ramp. Safe lights at 3 p.m. Like I said, a lot of the, lot of the Heartland tournaments going on. Uh, Watch Bar, uh, or here's North, uh, April the 2nd. They'll be at Point 19. That's Division One. Uh, Division Two is March the 26th. They'll be uh, at the Dam. Uh, Chickamauga, 
they, uh, let's see, April the 9th, uh, or excuse me, uh, March the 12th, that's this coming Saturday, uh, on the 12th. That's on Chickamauga at Harrison Bay State Park, uh, Harrison Bay State Park, excuse me. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, you can get, uh, get, get in, involved in that and uh, make a mark through that. And ours, Kentucky Lake, they're the 12th, and we're going on over here to Loudon Teleco, March the 16th, or excuse me, uh, March the 12th. They've got theirs on March the 12th also. Uh, that's Division 5, Loudon Teleco at the uh, at Canal Ramp. Then Fort Loudon at Concord, uh, March the 19th uh, is their next tournament. So moving right on down the list, uh, April, uh, Percy Priest, uh, Cherokee, here we go, uh, March the 13th, this is Division 9, Cherokee, 25E Bridge, uh, safe light till 3 o'clock, and that's March the 13th, mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a Sunday uh, tournament trail right there, so uh, Division 10, back on Watts Bar at Caney Creek, uh, March the 19th. Is their next tournament there at Caney Creek? Uh, going on to Milton Hill. Uh, let's see what we got on Milton Hill. I guess uh, these guys have kind of went to all the way into June, but I know why. It's because of the uh, uh, all the tournaments on Milton Hill, uh, the Monday nighters, Tuesday nighters. Thursday nighters, Friday nighters, and all that kind of stuff is going to start here pretty quick. As a matter of fact, the Monday nighter will start right here in April, uh, Mike. So that's just a few weeks away. Mm -hmm. We're we're three weeks away from the Monday night tournament starting on Milton Hill. So that's why the the Milton Hill division is is got their schedule. They go from February all the way to June. Uh, then you go to Douglas. Like I said, they got theirs uh, the twelfth. This is the Heartland Tournaments now, uh, Fort Loudon. That's the summer division. Uh, let's see. We're getting into the summer division on the back pages here. Uh, so that's pretty much uh, got the you know one on the 26th at Douglas uh, at Dandridge there, March the 26th, and. That pretty well takes care of all the Heartland tournaments. Then you turn over here and you got the USA Bass. Mm -hmm. uh, their next tournament is uh, on the 20th of March, and it's at Douglas Lake, and it's at the dam at Douglas Dam uh, boat ramp from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, that's a good tournament trail right there. Uh, Tom's Marine, Douglas, Cherokee Division. They just fish in two lakes. Uh, you know, you need to check into that. They're on the web page and all that good stuff. So uh, nothing wrong with that tournament trail right there. Yeah. And you got the uh, the team trail, uh, Tennessee team trail. They're March the 19th on Norris. They'll be putting in Anderson County Park. And uh, uh, you can get uh, all your information on that. Uh, log into Tennessee team trail and get their tournaments, and like their next one will be on Douglas April the 9th, but they do have one coming up here the 19th uh, uh, of this month, so uh, got about another week or so away from that. Get you in on that. Uh, the Lucas Oil North Lake Open uh, April the 9th at Rogan's, Rogan's Ramp is where they're putting in at. Uh, you can first prize guaranteed ten thousand uh, dollars, and uh, you qualify for the tournament of champions and and uh, uh, and a free tournament to be held on uh, Kentucky Lake. So uh, a lot of good information there, for sure. Uh, then we're moving on into uh, White Pine Tournament Trail uh, single day event. Let's see. That I have wrote down for that. White Pine Marine uh, Tournament Trail. And, uh, well, 
Dang. I can't find the date on this thing here, but I will. Just bear with me. Go ahead, Mike, and let's catch, catch that caller. Hello, caller. Hey, Steve, it's your sister. Hey, Vicky. I just wanted to uh, give you a reminder that this weekend is the time change. So if you want to remind all your fishermen that's got tournaments coming up, you said some will be Sunday. They don't want to miss them. Well, Vicky Lynn, I want to thank you for that, but me and Mike, we never change our clocks back oh. in, the, in the fall. We always stay on the spring ahead. A good fisherman always stays ahead of the game. Okay. So, uh, you know, I just wanted to let you know that. Yeah, well, my clock never changes. It's always on daylight savings time. So. All right. That's, I just wanted to remind all your fishermen about that. Well, you might want, well, I appreciate that. I'm glad you did, but uh, uh, you might want to just set yours up this time and then not fool with it again, and then that way you're not losing that hour of sleep. Oh, I wish. I have to be at work, though. I'm just kidding you, Vic. Thanks for calling in. That's a good reminder. Okay. Talk to you later. Love you. Love you. Bye. All right. There, March 19th. I'd like to aggravate my sister, Vic. Yeah, March the 19th, Mike, the White Pine Marine Tournament Trail, Cherokee Lake, uh, 25E Bridge. That's yeah. a good one there. And then later on in the year, we got the uh, May the 7th is the Tim Irwin Tournament over here on Loudon Teleco. The proceeds go in the Boys and Girls Club. Then in May the 21st, you got the St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital uh, donate. Uh, fundraiser uh, down here at the uh, uh, be on Labor Day weekend uh, yeah somewhere around Labor Day weekend it's May the 21st that's the St. Jude's tournament on Watts Bar Lake uh, Travis Lemons is coordinator of that hopefully we'll have him on the show over here before this takes place and may even get Tim Irvin over here uh, before his show I talked to him back at, uh, in January about that maybe he'll we'll have him over here but there's a whole bunch of tournaments, folks, and you guys know of a lot more than I do, uh, more than likely. This is all the stuff that I can muster up. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of tournaments going on and, and a lot of uh, uh, tournaments that I don't have flyers for and that kind of thing. So uh, if you know of one and you want to talk about it, call in over here and tell me when and where it's at, and you can tell us all about it. And, Get people in on it. Is right. Uh, but I'm glad, Mike, you've put the crappie stuff up. Now maybe me and you can concentrate on a little bit <clears throat> of yeah. what's going on. You know, we've got uh, 14 tackle boxes full of bass stuff down there, and here I am running around with a minter bucket. Yeah. 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 I, it just, I, I, well, it does a lot to get when you want something to eat, don't well, it? Well, you know, heck, I could always go up there and catch a rockfish or something, you yeah. know. Uh, that gum or some bluegill or something, you know, uh, yeah. But uh, anyway, I'm glad we're over the crappies for now. Uh, we'll uh, we'll get in on the bass in here and see what's going on. It's been so long since I've fished for them, I probably can't catch one. You think so? I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. Uh, hey, I will tell you this, and I've told you before, it's jerk bait time. Yeah. If it ain't right now and i there's a few fish being caught on the jerk bait but they're only going to get better uh don't wait till you get to the lake to, to tune your jerk bait uh get the thing if it needs weight on it get it on it uh, and uh if you're winding that thing in and you guys that fish a crank bait a lot you know what i'm talking about <clears throat> when you throw it out there beside the boat to look at it and you're pulling it uh, and it wants to dip out on you, you need to adjust that eye in that thing. Yeah. Get that thing where it's swimming true. When you're just winding it, it probably won't get more than two or three feet deep. And uh, But if it's dipping out, you need to get get up there in that eye. You know how to adjust that thing and tune it in to where it, when you're winding it, it's coming at you straight. Mm -hmm. That's another little uh tip I'm going to pass along to you and then like I said uh, if you want that plug to set stationary uh, 
when you quit twitching it, you have to put some weight on it probably or some bigger hooks uh, and that kind of thing. But you need to do that in a, in a tub of water. I just get my wife's Tupperware out of the cabinet and fill it full of water and go down there and hold that plug down and turn it loose and, and it needs to stay still. Pretty much, Mike. I, this neutral buoyancy, if it's going to rise, I want it to rise just real slow. Mm. Uh, now that's the way I like to fix them. I don't know. You know, that's, that's the tip I can give you as far as I'm concerned. I do like to fish them. I like to catch fish on them. And I want them to be right when I get there with them. Mm. And you'll find a few, you know, brand new ones uh, that's ready to go. And then you'll find a few brand new ones that yeah. uh, huh? they either sinking, yeah, or they they you can't keep them under water. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, it pays to kind of check them out before you get ready to use them. Then that way you're not up there on the boat trying to get that daggum uh, lead weight that uh, what we call them things, Mike. Spots. Them spots yeah. stick on the bait, you know. And you just put it on there and throw it a cast and it's back off and uh, so do it at home before you get to the lake. Yeah, lead tape strip <coughs> spots or something to yeah. put on it. You can, you can put them in the middle, you can put them up toward the front. front. Yeah. You know, whatever to make it balance out. You know. That's right. Try to make it as natural as you can. Uh, you know, uh, <coughs> I don't know... Uh, I, I like for mine to kind of float pretty flat myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I've never seen many minners running around with their heads stuck down. Have you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, that's what we're trying to imitate. You get you know. schools of them in balls, they just going every which way, though. Yeah. You know. Yeah, but they swim kind of oh, like they this. Do. They don't swim like this. Yeah, they they get spooked. They go every which way. Yeah. You know. Injured, they like to be upside down, laying on their side like injured minners and stuff, you know. So, yeah, you can't never tell what a fish is going to strike. You see something that you think it's going to catch them, and then all of a sudden it, it don't. Yeah. All right, folks. Hey, God bless you. Hope we get some film for next week, and uh, maybe Mike will have some bass fin. <laughs> yeah. See you next week, folks. Country Fresh Foods. You may not know the name, but you definitely know the taste. Our homemade fudge is shipped all over the country. Its quality is unmatched, and it's made right here in Oliver Springs. But you don't have to travel all over to enjoy it. You can get it right here at our retail store. Pamela Ann's Fudge Candy and Gifts. The highest quality fudge in a countless variety of flavors. And we also carry a variety of candy and unique gifts for you to enjoy. Come enjoy the taste you have loved for years at Pamela Ann's Fudge Candy and Gifts in Oliver Springs, a division of Country Fresh Foods. Rodney and Kay Harback invite everyone to come on over to Rome Street Grill to experience a pleasant dining experience with them. Rodney knows how important it is to get folks back to work after lunch. So they have a speedy lunch at Rome Street Grill. They will get you in and get you out every day. They have a special at lunch or order off the menu. So go visit the fine folks at Rome Street Grill. Call them at 865-285-6025. That's Rome Street Grill across from Jerry Duncan Ford in Harriman. Call them at 865-285-6025. 